Now, now flipping over to the second side, we're going to take those ideas from the front side and now take them a little bit to the next level. We're actually going to go through and solve the systems of equations using the four methods that we've learned. So we've talked about solving a system of equations in this unit, which means that we're going to find the point that is shared by both of the equations, that works in both of the equations. And so the first method is by graphing, and we're going to use the two equations and find the intersection point between these two lines, and that will be the solution. That will be the point that they both share. So on the front side, we talked about using our y-intercept and our slope. We're going to do the same thing here. So here's our y-intercept for the first equation is negative 3. So we're going to graph that point first. And then our slope is negative 2. Remember, as a rise over run, we'll think of it as negative 2 over 1. Instead of a whole number, you can put it over 1. So negative 2 divided by 1 is still just negative 2 but we can think of it more as a rise over run that way. So that means that we're going to rise negative 2 from our wider set. That means we're going to go down 2 and then right 1. Down 2, right 1. I am going to do a few points here because I'd like us to get a nice accurate graph going. And if you're using a straight edge, that certainly helps. But if not, then we definitely want to graph some points here so we can make sure that we can see very precisely where these two lines are going to cross. Okay, so we're going to take those, connect them up, make a nice line here. Remember, well, there's not quite as long on the board, so I'm going to have to take just some pieces. Okay. Got our line graphed, now let's graph our second line. Our second line has a y-intercept of positive 4. And then our slope is positive 3 over 2. So as a rise over run, that'd be rise 3, run 2. Rise 3, run 2. Okay, well we can see going up in this direction, we're not going to intersect our other line. But if we reverse that direction and go down 3 and left 2, Notice we keep the same pattern. So if we're going backwards, we just reverse. So we'll go down three and left two, down three, left two. And we can still see these all line up. And you can see that they do cross, which is good news because that's the whole goal here is we're trying to find the point which these two lines share. And they do indeed share this point right here. They cross at that point. So if we can carefully look at what that point would be. So that is negative 2, positive 1. The coordinates, negative 2 on the x, positive 1 on the y. So negative 2, 1 is our solution. All right. A little arrows at the end of my red lines here. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the second one here, only we're going to be using our calculator maybe now to get our table of values. So at this point, you probably want to grab your calculator, although maybe you can do this without using your calculator and just that, use that idea of the y-intercept and the slope. But we, in class, we've been using our calculator, so we'll go ahead and do that. So if you go in the y equals on your calculator and type in 4 minus 2x and then do the same thing with the second equation, we'll get positive one-half x minus one. And we'll go to our table and we'll take a look at our table and see where these two lines share the same value. And it looks like they share the same value when the x value is two. So four minus two x, one-half x minus one. Okay, so if you're on your calculator right now, you might see that they both share the same point at 2, 0. And if you want to record the rest of the points, maybe do a couple x values above, a couple x values below, keep the same x values for both equations here, and record the rest of them. Now, uh, we know that the y-intercept value here is going to be 4, so 0, 4. And we know the slope is negative 2, so we know these are going to go down by 2 each time that the x value goes up by 1, the y value is going to go down by 2. 
So negative 2, negative 4, and then same thing. This one, notice our y-intercept is negative 1 here, and we're increasing by a half each time. So that'd be negative 1 half, 0, positive 1 half, positive 1. But both of the equations share that point to 0. So 2, 0 is the solution. All right, so now the substitution method. And so remember we talked about on the front side, we're looking at which equation is in either x equals or y equals form. So that would be the first equation in this one. And so we're going to circle what is after the x equals, because if x equals 5y minus 1, that means that we should bring it down into the second equation, and we can substitute it in for x. Since it is equal to x, we can make that make that change. We can trade that out for the x, and then we'll rewrite that first equation, or actually we'll rewrite the second equation. So 2 times 5y minus 1 minus 7y equals 4. Now let's do the distributive property. So now we go through our solving steps. Distributive property, combine like terms, then go through your SADMEP order of operations for solving. So first off, let's distribute that 2 through both of those terms inside the parentheses. So you've got 10y, 2 times 5y is 10y, 2 times a negative 1 is a minus 2, minus 7y equals 4. Now combine like terms, looking on the same side of the equation, we've got a 10y and we've got minus 7y. So together that would be 10 minus 7 or positive 3y. Right? So now we've got 3y minus 2 is equal to 4. All right, now we've gotten to our sad map solving step, so we're going to undo the operations to get back to the y, to get y by itself. So we're going to undo the minus 2 by adding 2. 3y equals 6, and then we'll undo multiplication by dividing, and we find that y is equal to 2. So in terms of our solution, now we have the y value of the solution. Now recall what we have to do next is take that and substitute that back in, plug that back into one of the equations up here. Usually one of them is easier than another, and when you're doing substitution, that x equals equation is going to be the easier one to substitute it back in, because that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what x is. We already have the y, so we're trying to figure out what x is. All right, so I'm just going to rewrite that equation over here just because I have more room to work over here. And then I'm going to plug that in for y. I'm going to substitute that in. So now we've got 5 times 2 minus 1. And so that's 10 minus 1. And that is 9. So our solution is the point 9, 2. Ordered pair 9, 2. Our last method that we learned in the last few days is called the elimination method. Remember, this works when we have equations in standard form like this, where we have the x and the y on the same side of the equation. We're looking for the coefficients to be the same with either the x's or the y's, so that when we add or subtract them, we can eliminate one of the variables. You notice in this problem, we've got a 3 and a negative 6 for the coefficients of the x, so those are not really the same. But with the y's, we have a positive 5, we've got a negative 5. So notice that those are more or less the same except for a positive and a negative. Remember, if we have a positive and negative the same value, we can combine these equations together. We can eliminate the y's by adding them. If they are opposite in sign, that means 5 plus negative 5 is 0. If they were the same sign, like positive 5y and positive 5y down here, we would have to subtract to eliminate. But since they're opposite in sign, we will add to eliminate. So we add all the way across here. Please put the plus signs, the addition signs in here. And now let's add our like terms. 3x plus negative 6x is a negative 3x. 5y plus negative 5y is 0. So we'll just eliminate that from our calculation for the moment. 44 plus negative 38 is positive 6. All right, so we simplify very quickly now. To undo multiplication, we will divide, and now we have x equals negative 2.
So we've got the x value of our solution, negative 2. And now we just need to get our y value. So we have to figure out, is one of these equations easier to plug back into, easier to substitute? I kind of like the equation that has all the positive values here. I think that one's maybe easier to work with. So I'm going to rewrite that one over here. And now we're going to do that substitution. So we're going to take that negative 2. Now it is the x equals negative 2. So we're going to put it in for the x in the equation. So 3 times negative 2 plus 5y equals 44. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. All right, no distributive property here, no combining like terms, but we just simplified a little bit there first. So now we're going to go through our order of operations, sat and map, get y by itself. We'll start off by undoing the term sitting out over here by adding 6 to eliminate or to undo the minus 6. Bring down what's left, 5y equals 50. And then our last step will be to undo multiplication, so we will divide both sides by 5. And now we get y is equal to 10. So our solution is the ordered pair negative 2, 10. That concludes our review of our systems of linear equations. If you would like to refer to this during your quiz, then I think that could be helpful.